If you really want to know what happens when you edit a material or style in SketchUp, or if you want to save materials and styles and components for that matter for use in other models, then you really need to understand how collections work. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video. Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. Now, collections have always confused me and baffled me. You know, you notice the term collections when you click on the details menu in either the materials panel. So right here we have open or create collection, add collection to favorites, remove collection from favorites. It also appears in the styles details menu right here and also in the components details menu. And so like if you click on open or create collection, it just opens up file explorer. So it's like, is a collection just a folder? Well, not really. So a collection is the term SketchUp uses to define any bundle of assets. So if we look at the materials collection drop-down menu, there's a few different types of collections. So we have the in-model collection, and those are the materials that are embedded in the actual SketchUp file. Then you have a bunch of local collections, and I apologize for the weirdness going on here. I think there's a bug in SketchUp with the 4K monitors. But anyways, so these are your default local collections. And then down here are some of my favorited local collections. So one thing that's kind of cool to realize is all of the default materials that come with SketchUp are literally a direct link to a folder location on your computer. So if I go to, let me bring this down a little bit. If I go to this location, this is like the actual location where SketchUp installed the default materials. And you can see here that all of these folder names directly correspond to the name of the collection. So there's a direct relationship between the local folders on your computer and the collections that are in the drop down menu in SketchUp. And another cool thing to, to realize is each material is actually a SKM file type. So this makes materials portable. You can export them, you can import them, you can send them to someone else for them to use in their version of SketchUp. And a cool side note is these are literally just zip files. So if you if you rename the file extension to zip, you can then open that file and see kind of how materials are constructed, which is kind of neat. So if collections are directly linked to folders, why not just call them folders? Well, that's the thing. It's not always the case. Collections aren't always directly connected to a local folder. So for instance, the in-model collection is very special because this refers to all of the assets that are directly embedded in the SketchUp model. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later, but there's also cloud-based collections. So for instance, when you go to the components panel, you can search the 3D warehouse and view cloud-based collections. So it's not fair to say collections are just folders because they don't always represent local folders on your computer. So that's why they came up with the term collections. It's really a generic term to represent either local folders on your computer, embedded assets built into the model, or cloud-based assets that you can download from the 3D warehouse. All right, so why is it so important to understand these different types of collections? Now, I think the most important thing to realize is how the in-model collection behaves. So if we look at the materials panel again and look at the in-model collection, you'll notice that it shows you all of the materials that are embedded in the model. So all of these colors here are basically all of these materials. And here's the key. Whenever you edit a material in SketchUp, you're actually editing the in-model copy and not the original 
asset that's located in the local collection. And the reason why this happens is because whenever you add a material to your model, SketchUp actually copies it from the local collection and embeds it in the in-model collection. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm gonna just clear out this model, I'm gonna delete this component, and I wanna purge out these materials. Now I can't do that currently because even though I deleted the component in the model, it still exists in the in-model collection in the components dialog. So I just need to delete this component and now when I go to the materials panel, I can purge unused. So now we have a completely blank model. I'm just gonna add a cube here that we can paint. And I'm also going to expand the secondary selection panel. Now this button right here just basically creates another copy of this down below. So you can navigate to two different collections and view them both at the same time. So I'm in the local collection, the asphalt and concrete local collection here, and then I have the in-model collection down here. And again, this is completely blank right now, I just cleared it out. Now watch what happens when I grab a material from a local collection and then paint it on a surface in my model. So SketchUp actually copies the original material and places it in my model. Now if I grab this one here and apply it here, you can see it adds it again. Now this really makes a lot of sense if you think about it because if you send this model to someone else and they don't have those materials on their computer, the same thing goes for styles and components, they will still be able to see the model as you've created it because all of those things are embedded in the model itself. Now another thing to keep in mind is if you remove assets from your workspace, the materials will remain in the in-model collection. So even though they don't actually exist in the model, they're still embedded in the in-model collection. It's kind of like, I'm gonna do a poor analogy here, but it's kind of like painting on a canvas, right? You have, you start out with your tubes of paint and that represents your local collection. And when you're gonna start a painting, you might add paint to a palette and that represents your in-model collection. Now, when you mix paints together on your palette, it doesn't change, you know, the colors of the paint in the tube. You know, those are in the tube, protected, they're not getting mixed together, obviously. And then, you know, you can paint on your canvas and like if you wipe off some paint from your canvas, that doesn't change what paint you have on your palette, right? So it's kind of like, <laughs> hopefully that made sense, but it, you know, it's kind of like that. You know, your in-model collection is unique to the model and any changes you make to the in-model collection don't affect the original local copy. And if you remove a material from a face in your model, the material is still gonna exist in the in-model collection. So it's a good idea if you're using a lot of different materials that you don't need anymore to just, you know, as time goes by, just go ahead and click purge unused and it'll get rid of that. Now this one didn't erase just because it is still my currently active material. All right, so let's take a look at that again. So I'm gonna add the this material. I'm gonna add this material and watch what happens when I edit the material. So I have this one selected, I'll change the opacity down, and you'll notice that the in-model copy is the one that changed, not the original. Now what happens if I try to add this material again to the model? Because I think that's what most people do, right? They never really go to the in-model collection, they just go to you know the local collection and just kind of add from there. So if I do that, since I made a change to the original one I brought in, SketchUp realizes that and brings in a new copy. Now, if I hadn't made a change, so if I try to bring this one in again and paint it to this surface, it doesn't actually bring in a duplicate copy. SketchUp realizes that those two materials are the exact same thing. So kind of in the background, it just automatically switches to the material that you already imported, which is kind of cool. You don't end up with, you know, a boatload of duplicate 
copies of materials. All right, so the key takeaway here is just to realize that anytime you're editing a style or a material, you're always gonna be editing the in-model copy. You can never like directly edit a local copy in a local collection. It's always gonna be the in-model copy. So then comes the question, how do you save custom materials and custom styles that you've created and how do you reuse them in other models in SketchUp? So that's where creating custom collections comes into play. So really it kind of comes down to three steps. You need first to create the custom material, that's obvious, which you know it'll be in your in-model collection. The second thing you need to do is save it to your computer. And then the third thing you need to do is create a local collection that you can then recall in the drop-down menu next time you open SketchUp, next time you're in a different model. So there's kind of three different steps. Now, you know, customizing materials and styles, that's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but just realize that anytime you customize it, it's gonna be in the in-model collection. So if you're in the materials panel to save it to your computer, there's a number of different things you can do. When you're in the in-model collection, also you can just click this uh, home icon to view it. You can right click on any one of these thumbnails and click save as, that's gonna bring up File Explorer and you can save the asset wherever you want. So let's say in this folder here, I wanna create a new folder called tutorial and I wanna save this material file in this folder. So I'll click save. Okay, so that's you know step two, saving the material. There's also other ways you can do it. You can, if you wanna save all of the materials that are in your model, you can click the details button and click save collection as, and that'll save all of the materials to a location on your computer. There's also a third way where you can literally just click and drag materials from one panel to the other. If you have the secondary selection pane open, you can just click and drag, but you kind of need to have a collection set up first, which is what I'm about to show you next. So just keep that in mind once you know how to create a collection. So to create a collection, a local collection, you have two options. Now it doesn't matter which details button you click here, they're both literally just duplicates. So there's two options here, open or create a collection and add collection to favorites. Now I kind of hate the way these two commands are worded because I've always found it confusing Fusing. I've always thought like add collection to favorites meant like it's gonna take, you know, whatever's in this window and like favorite it. So like if I'm in, you know, a different, if I'm looking at different materials, if I go here and click add collection to favorites, it's gonna like favorite these, but that's not at all how it works. It doesn't matter where you are in the collections navigation. These two buttons are all they're gonna do. They're both gonna pretty much do the same thing for this first step. They're just gonna open File Explorer, that's it. Both of those commands are just for you to pick a local folder on your computer. The other thing that I find annoying is the differentiation. Like this one says open or create, but this one just says add. But really, like there's nothing stopping you from clicking, you know, create new folder in the add command. So it's like really both of these should say, you know, create, open or create a collection and add or create a collection to favorites. So they're just really confusing. And the only difference between these two options is this one is literally going to add a folder to your drop down menu just for this instance of SketchUp. So next time you open SketchUp, the folder is going to be gone. Whereas if you choose add collection to favorites, it's going to permanently mount the folder to the bottom of the drop down menu. That's the only difference. So at the end of the day, both of these commands are going to allow you to pick a folder. So if I go to materials and actually I was already in there, but if I select tutorial, select folder, now that folder has been deemed a collection and is at the bottom of the drop down menu. Now, since I just clicked on open, and not add collection to favorites. Next time I open SketchUp, that folder is not gonna be in the drop-down menu. All right, so once you have 
the folder set up as a collection, you can see the material that we already saved to that folder location, but you can also click and drag, like I said. And if we look at File Explorer, we can literally see those files being dropped into place. So I just added the third one here. Let me, uh, let me drag this over. So as I drag materials into this folder, it's literally adding it to the local folder. So again, just to kind of reinforce that relationship between collections and local folders. So that's it. I hope this was kind of like an epiphany moment for you in how the relationship between collections and files and folders work. There's a few little differences in how the components collection works. Now that you understand kind of the fundamentals of this, it's gonna make it a lot easier for you to understand how to save and organize your various assets for SketchUp. So thanks for watching this video. As always, make sure you subscribe if you wanna catch more of my SketchUp videos. And uh, thanks for watching.